What's up guys, Eric here with driverlineup.com, world's okay steering wheel holder. And today I'm gonna talk to you guys about how to run a Prime Inc. lease truck or lease purchase truck or a truck that you own um, <clears throat> very, very successfully as a team couple or with a family member, significant other, et cetera, et cetera. Um, now, this is very relevant to Jenna and I. So for a lot of you, this is not, you know, maybe you're, maybe you don't have a family member or someone who's going to drive with you or would be willing to drive with you. Maybe you have a wife or a husband or, you know, partner who, whatever it may be that rides with you. And you've been thinking about having them get their CDL and drive. That's what this video is about because I've gotten some questions on how do you actually I had a, the, the reason I'm making this is because someone on our social network at driverlineup.com asked me if they should team with both drivers as company drivers. <clears throat> and my opinion on that was no, they should not. And there's a lot of reasons for this, but first let me get into the way that Jen and I run our truck. So I am the, uh, I'm the individual, it's my LLC that is in contract to haul freight. So my LLC has been leasing trucks with Prime. My LLC is about to be lease purchasing trucks from Prime next week. Um, so it's my LLC that's in a service contract to haul freight with Prime Inc. Jenna, however, is a Prime Inc. company driver. So she technically works for Prime Inc and I basically lease her from Prime. And maybe that's not the best word to use, that's just kind of the way that I see it. Um, Prime passes all of her cost on to my LLC. So her workman's comp, um, her, uh, her, what do you call the employee, uh, payroll taxes, um, her insurance, um, oh gosh, what do you, anyway, Prime's part of the insurance um, any little, any little benefits that Prime provides, like they have a little $20 a week, uh, health and wellness, anything like that, those costs get passed on to me. So I'll see them in my settlement. I'll see a, uh, an entire section for her and all of the costs are passed on by Prime to me. So, um, I pay all of her benefits and I pay all of her miles. Um, so Prime doesn't really pay for anything for that company driver. It's the same if you're a trainer and you have a company driver on your truck that you're training and that trainer's your student. You're going to not only pay the $900, you're also going to pay those additional benefits and costs um, that are associated with having basically a W-2 employee, just that that W-2 employee is not technically working for you. They're working for Prime. They're being leased to you as the LLC that's hauling the freight. Um, I think, you know, a lot of people complain about it. I think it's great. I don't want to do W-2s. I don't want to do all the accounting. I don't want to have a W-2 employee. There's a lot of really negative imp uh, implications that, that come with that, um, especially being a small business. I don't want to get into like having to provide healthcare options and all that, you know, having Prime have all that makes it extremely simple. Um, so that's the way that that works. And, and um, the reason that I would say that if you're going to team with a significant other or a family member, the reason you want to have one of the one of the drivers be a lease driver or a lease purchase driver is that when you're moving into team freight, the amount of money generated per mile expands exponentially. It, it's substantial. Um, and the reason is because you're a team truck. You can haul more valuable freight. Well, not more valuable freight per se. In, in a lot of cases, it will be. But higher paying freight. Just by nature of the fact that as a team truck, you're going to be able to get that freight from point A to point B quicker. You don't, and even if it's not necessarily quicker, like some solo drivers will say, well, you can only do 65. I can do 65. Yeah, but here's the difference. A team truck always has hours. So a solo truck may have just finished a 10 hour drive and uh, their 14 hour clock is taken down. So they've got to stop for 10 hours, right? They can't, 
it can't be somewhere in two hours and then pick up a load that has to be immediately taken 600 miles to its destination. They have to stop for 10 hours. They're gonna have to take a break. Whereas a team truck, if it's sitting 30 miles away, sales and your dispatch knows that truck can move. It can immediately go get that freight and then it can immediately take that 600 miles out of the equation and get that freight delivered. The customer knows that too. And because of that, a lot of these rates tend to be a little bit higher because that freight is getting from point A to point B much quicker. It doesn't have to stop for 10 hour breaks. The truck can immediately go there to pick the freight up and can immediately take it to drop the freight off. So um, you tend to see higher rates even for the same loads. It could be a meat load, the same load that a solo driver could go pick up, a team truck could be paid higher just because it's being delivered to the customer in a short amount of time. So everybody's paying a little bit more for that because it's getting there quicker, like steak, for example. Let's say Walmart needs steak 800 miles and it needs it like now, because you know they're, they're short at that warehouse or whatever the case may be, On their, that load's gonna come up for grabs and because it needs to be expedited and get there, the rate could be a little bit higher. And that's why team trucks are going to get a higher rate. Also, team trucks can hire uh, can haul certain types of produce loads that solo trucks can't because we can get it there quicker. To make organic tomatoes, things that have a very short shelf life, um, we can haul those things. The rate's going to be a little bit higher. We haul a lot of pharmaceuticals, a lot of things that there has to be a, a driver with the truck at all times. So you can't, that can't be a solo load. Team trucks can haul those loads those rates are higher. So as a team truck, if both company dri if both drivers are company drivers, the mileage pay stays the same. You could run 5,000 miles and that mileage pay is staying the same, but the amount of revenue, AKA profit, that's generated by that team truck is substantially higher. And that's why I told this individual, I said, well, you can and you'll probably make good money, but understand that the profit margins of a team truck are significantly higher and therefore you're potentially leaving a lot of money on the table. So that's why it was my suggestion that you don't. <laughs> if you're gonna be a team truck, it's probably best that one of the drivers be, that it be a lease truck uh, because the truck is just gonna generate so much more money than it would if you had a solo truck or, um, you know, the, well, the, the truck would generate that money whether you're both company drivers or not. Um, but you want a bigger share of that money. And that's why it's preferable to have one as least. Now, another thing, if you are a couple or if you're in a partnership or whatever, you can both be on that one company driver's insurance plan. I believe you have to be married. I'm not, don't quote me on that. You'll have to ask Prime. Uh, but that's another big advantage is because Jenna has benefits as a company driver for Prime Inc., I also can be on that plan. So basically, she gets all the benefits of being on a lease truck. She's not, the truck is not forced dispatch. She doesn't have to only be home for four days. Her time off is not really, you know, it's not something she has to ask. When I take time at the house, she's taking time at the house. When I'm ready to roll, she's ready to roll. There's never any, hey, she's a company driver, she's supposed to be moving, not relevant. Um, so she gets all the benefits of being on a lease truck in a lease fleet. I get all the benefits that come with company drivers in terms of insurance and things like that through her. Um, so it's really the optimal way to run it. Um, and because that's why we, we are so, we're so profitable um, and especially if you're a married couple or, or a couple or with a partner, all that money comes to your household. See, if you're two, if you're a team, you have to split all the revenue and all the miles between you. So all the profit of the truck is going in a lot of cases, probably 50, 50, right? Unless it's a student. But if it's, if you're both upgrade and you're both AC, then that money is being split. So it's you make good money, but you got to run a lot of miles. But if you're a, a married team, um, or if all that revenue is coming into the, the same household, 
the company driver's W-2 and the lease driver or the owner operator's 1099, then it, it rains money because, uh, all, because it's just one income, basically. It may come through two sources or th through two avenues, but it's one income coming into that bank account. You're not paying someone that then takes that money off the truck and into an account and into a household that is not yours. All of the profit comes onto the truck. So uh, we basically run about 4,000 miles a week. We do anywhere from 7,500 to 10,000 a week in revenue. Um, and between the two of us bring home five, $6,000 on a weekly basis. Uh, and that's at 4,000 miles, you guys. And I see comments all the time of, oh, you guys, if you're a team, you should be making so much more money than that. We only run 4,000 miles. Could you imagine if we ran 6,000 miles? That means if we ran 6,000 miles, potentially we could be bringing home seven, you know, maybe $8,000 a week but we just can't, we don't want to run that hard. There's more things that are valuable to us in life than just being a machine running 1200 miles per, you know, per day. Um, we're more of like a six or 700 mile a truck per day makes, or seven or 800 maybe. Uh, that kind of mileage makes us really happy. But uh, that's the way it works, you guys. Um, I hope that answers the question. I'm gonna send it to the individual because it was direct message to me on our social network. So I'm gonna send this video to you. Thank you for the question. Um, but yeah, that that is, and it's the most optimal way. If you can, if you have a wife or a husband on the truck with you or a girlfriend, boyfriend, a significant other partner, you can ask them to drive the truck. You know, they don't have to, you don't have to, you know, sign that person up to run five or 600 miles a day. Just drive the truck forward for a couple hundred miles a day. It makes such a big difference in what the revenue of your truck can be and therefore what the profit per week can be um, by just having a couple hundred extra miles a day. I mean, it's, it's substantial. Another thing is if you're running a team like that, when you go home and take your home time, it's much easier to get out of the hole because you're able to generate so much revenue so quickly in the week that you leave home. If you went home for 10 days, you may be, you know, a thousand, two thousand dollars in the hole. Uh, but if you, but running a team, you're going to be climbing, climbing right out of that hole within a week. Whereas a solo driver, if you go home for 10 days, it's a hell of a climb to get out of that hole, right? So there's just so many, so many benefits of doing it this way. Um, <clears throat> We're going to continue doing it this way, even though we're buying trucks now, we're going the owner operator path uh, and we'll have two trucks, you know, by October 1st, uh, the, the beginning of our fleet, Jenna and I will still operate this way. Even though I'm buying a truck, she's still going to remain a W-2 employee for Prime and I'll continue leasing her. Again, maybe that's not the right word to use. That's the way I see it. I'll continue leasing her from Prime uh, because it's just, it's the best model possible, um, to make this work the way that it works for us. So anyway, that would be my, my advice. If any of you are thinking of doing the same, don't both go company because, you know, again, you run that five or 6,000 miles in a week because you're both getting paid 50 or uh, 25 cents, 26, 27 cents per mile or whatever it is. Um, that's great. You're going to be making good money, but your profit per mile for the truck is much, much higher than that. And you don't want to leave that money on the table. So my recommendation is if you're a team truck, one of the two needs to be a lease driver. Um, and, and you can work, you can work out ways to make it, you know, so if you say to your, if one of you is a company driver, let's say you're not in a partnership, not in a, not married, it's not your significant other, let's just say it's a friend, say, look, I still pay you the 25, 26 cents per mile and then pay myself that exact same amount and we'll split whatever, you know, whatever net there is, something like that because you just don't wanna leave that extra money on the table. So anyway, guys, hopefully that answers that question. That's how we run our truck. That's how we do the lease company uh, split running our truck as a married couple and um it's worked out really really well for us uh 
man, outside of that, we're just enjoying time. Our truck should be in, be in Springfield next week. We're just enjoying our time at home right now, getting a lot of stuff ready, um, going through a lot of our stuff and reorganizing, thinking of what we actually need on the truck versus what we don't. We also know that winter is around the corner, so we're preparing for that. Matt from No Luck Trucking and Transportation hooked us up with some auto socks. So we're incredibly happy. We don't have to take chains on the truck. So <sighs> I'm gonna get back inside to enjoying some life here while we have some home time. We don't have a lease payment right now. So we ain't making money, but we ain't losing or spending money either. So it's great. All right, thanks guys. Be safe, make good decisions. And as always, drive thrive. We'll talk to you soon.